Well guys, we're not used to this cold weather here in Florida. It's only 60 degrees and I know you guys are laughing at me up north, but it is cold for us. Florida people, we are like lizards. It gets under 80 degrees and we just fall out of the trees. We just spent about an hour high speed trolling. We were running about 14 knots. We had two fish that just kind of bumped and came off quickly. And then one that actually managed to get the hook in him. We fought him for it's about a minute, minute and a half. Adam was on the reel. He came unglued. There's been quite a bit of Wahoo caught in this area over the past couple weeks. So we were hoping to get our shot at one, but uh, it didn't pan out for us. Sitting in about 200 feet, I'm gonna drop down a 250 gram torpedo watermelon. Um, I got some single hooks on the bottom and the top. Um, I'm gonna tie to this ball bearing swivel right here. Drop it down, I've had some good marks on my screen on this little ledge we're on. We'll see what happens. Jig could be the difference between Look at that, rain, bro. that was cool. <laughs> Rigging your jig could be the difference between landing that fish of a lifetime or missing them. I'm gonna show you three different effective ways for rigging your jig and what we use them for. First up is probably the most common way to rig your jig. It's using a split ring, a ball bearing swivel, and assist hook with a solid ring attached to it. Remember this, the split ring is like a keychain. It's what holds everything together. We like to use a split ring because it allows the jig to spin in circles and that way it doesn't twist your line. And then the solid ring is always connected to the assist hook and then goes to the split ring as well. So you tie your fluorocarbon directly to the swivel and then you're connected. The bottom is just a split ring going to an assist hook. The downside to this is that you're fighting the fish through the split ring, which means that you're fighting them through the weakest link. The split ring is the first thing that goes whenever a jig pops off and then you're left with a ball bearing swivel. So this is the way we rig it whenever we're bottom fishing for bottom fish, like grouper, snapper, rockfish, any type of bottom fish that lives in structure, we're gonna rig it just like this. Sometimes I'll do a double loop through to a uni knot, and then sometimes I just tie a single old school clench knot and do about seven or eight wraps back through the hole. And some people modify it. I don't even modify it. I'll just go tight just like that. I've caught plenty of fish on that right there. I do like it to be double looped on the ball bearing swivel, but it's not completely necessary. But the only downside, if you do a uni, then your tag end ends up here. And then a lot of times your assist hook will grab onto that. All right, well, I got the 200 gram all glow torpedo down there. Drop in on the bottom. We were marking some fish coming up. I got a little hit, so I dropped her back down. She swallowed her up, baby! Let's go! <laughs> Ooh, a little, a little mutton. Let's see, Mr. Mutton. 15. Beautiful South Florida mutton. Caught on 200 gram. Johnny Jigs All Glow Torpedo available at johnnyjigs.com That's off the bottom. Whoa, bro. There you go. There you go, Charlie! Just off the bottom. Not a big fish. What a fish. But there's some big streaks on the screen. Some good marks on the screen as well. Oh, he just got bigger. Oh, he just got bigger. Oh, 
This thing was ripping jag and then came off. I, too. I, just had one too. I got sharked by something. Oh, there's a freaking clue down there, bro. Wow, look at that. So I had this uh, this a lizard fish actually, and then something just sliced him right in half. So that was either a kingfish down there or possibly a wahoo down there. So this little guy just got absolutely hammered. Here we go. Small, whatever it is. Small, oh, it's a foul hook jig, that's a monster. Wow, what we have here is the elusive foul hooked 190 flatback. You can only find these in South Florida. This, my friends, is a rare catch. So the second way of rigging your jig, it probably looks very similar to the first one, but there is a difference. One thing I'm just gonna cut away and tell you, split ring pliers are gonna be your best friend on the water. You're not gonna wanna take these split rings off with your teeth or a knife or anything like that. It's just not gonna work out for you. So the second way of rigging the jig, even though it looks similar and the bottom part of the jig is exactly the same, at the top, you'll notice that the ball bearing swivel has been removed. The big question that people always have is where do you tie the leader? And most people's minds go to the split ring. But I can tell you that the split ring is not where you wanna tie. Number one, there's a little bit of a sharp lip on the edge right there. The second thing is as it gets tighter and tighter onto the split ring, it can cause the split ring to roll over on itself. It's not an ideal place. In addition to that, now you're weakening your link and you're tying to the split ring. What I would do is tie to the solid ring, which is attached to the cyst hook. That's gonna be your strongest connection. As you are fighting through the assist hook only and a solid ring. So if the split ring was to give way, you are still connected to the fish, granted that you catch them on the top hook. So when I'm out fishing big game fish, I'm talking about bluefin tuna, yellowfin tuna, something that's got some serious horsepower, I generally will go with this connection because I know that that solid ring is not gonna pop when we're on the water. What's up, baby? Get him, baby! Yeah. Sometimes just these little marks that you see on the screen will produce fish. And Adam's on behind me. Nothing big. Let's see what we got, boys. We're only sitting in about 160 feet. And we're using our screen just to look for little nuggets. And we're kind of making our way back. Button snapper, boys. Double header button snapper. These guys are a little on the short side, but. Um, you can see by the, the dot on the tail of these fish, that's what tells you that it's a mutton snapper. But I, I want to get this guy back down as quick as possible, that way he can grow up and uh, be keeper size. Come back later, friend. So we've got three mutton snappers today. Came in the boat. Somehow or another, did not seem to land the wahoo. We had two good pops where it didn't sink the hook, and then we had one good runoff where we were fighting the fish for just a little bit, and then he came free and you really start to question yourself. You're like, oh, should I have slowed down as much as I did? Should I have done this or that? And what it boils down to, it's just fishing guys. And, and that sometimes you're gonna lose fish and sometimes you're gonna land them. So let's drop back down. Let's see if we can't get a keeper mutton off this spot. A few moments later. A little bigger. He's closer. He's closer for sure. What a beautiful fish, right? Look at the pink in the bottom of his tail and then it kind of turns into like a yellow there in the spot which really lets you know that that's a mutton. In addition to that, they have like this blue that goes across their face, very distinct. Let swim away. Uh -oh. That's not good. Adam, I gotta go get this fish. It's equalizer. You put this in his lower jaw and you depress these two plates right here to close the tool and now it's set. That's a descending device. Sometimes you can just quick connect those to your jigs. We're only in 150 feet. They usually don't have any problems going back down. Unfortunately, that guy did. Lucky for him, we, we keep a descending device on the boat. So if we can't harvest them, we don't want them to die. I'll show you what this descending device looks like whenever I bring it up here. You can hook it to the jigs, even though you have hooks on the jigs, you know, it goes on there um, relatively easily. It's not super secure on there, but it's enough for those little fish to be able to take them down. So it just clicks on like that. 
that's it holds the fish on there and you can see once it hurts hit that certain fathom this thing released and boom last but not least the third way to rig your jig it's not a huge favorite amongst the johnny jigs team but i see a lot of anglers doing it it seems to be effective but i can't tell you from firsthand experience i know once again it looks almost exactly the same but i'll tell you what the difference is instead of a ball bearing swivel or tying directly to the solid ring on the assist hook i've added an additional solid ring to the split ring. That's where you would terminate your fluorocarbon leader. I guess this just gives you a better movement. It's an alternative. If you don't have ball bearing swivels in your boat, it's something that it allows more freedom of movement. And then once again, the bottom of the jig is exactly the same with the split ring. So this would be effective for bottom fishing for bottom fish, or I would say you could even bring it up for pelagics, but I would say it's more ideal for targeting bottom species. So we talked a lot about pre-rigged assist hooks, the Johnny Jigs, the VMCs, the Van Fuchs, the Ocean Legacy. But what we haven't talked about is making your own. And this is something that a lot of guys like to do, but they don't know what the gear is in order to tie your own assist hooks. So we also carry at Johnny Jigs everything that you need to make any type of assist hook that you really would want. First thing that you're gonna need is cord. So Van Fook makes some nice cord. It's 150 pound test. It also has 200 pound test. And then another great option is the Hytina, which you can actually get metal core for toothy fish, as well as like a double line, which is like a woven metal that goes into Kevlar. The next thing you're gonna need is hooks. Johnny Jakes has a huge lineup. So we have 3-0 all the way up to 7-0. 7-0 is pretty beefy. That's gonna be for your bigger tunas. Once you get into the 5-0s, that's generally what we use for grouper, snapper, whether it's the 5-0s or the 4-0s. And then when we're jigging with lighter jigs, we tend to go a little bit smaller using the 3-0s. But in addition to the Johnny Jig single hooks, there's also the Gamagatsu 510s, which in a 3-0 and a 4-0 are great for the grouper and snapper. Something interesting, these O'Shaughnessy Mustads come in a bulk pack. We use these for years. Granted, the tip does point out versus curling in. It still works great for making assist hooks. And then another big brand is the Van Hoot. Yeah! Put that boot in neutral. Got it. He's bigger. Yeah, put it back! Oh. oh! Not gonna cry. Not on camera, anyways. Turn the camera off, David. 